You don't have to pressurize it. It's self-pressurizing, just like CO2. Uh, matter of fact, this is what we used on the Rutan craft. It's nitrous oxide. It was room temperature, 63 degrees out, uh, uh, 700 psi. That's exactly what we hit. You had, you had a valve, and then push the motor. The only difference is we kind of move this motor and integrate it with the tank on the Rutan vehicle. We did that on the club rocket too, by the way, back in 1995. <coughs> this motor actually screwed right to the tank. So we've been doing this stuff for a long time. And uh, so basically that's it. You, you have an igniter, preheats the fuel grain, nitrous valve opens. You, uh, you have to crack those bonds of nitrous, uh, nitrogen and the oxygen. And uh, basically the motor comes to life. and. Uh, and then it just blows down until it's empty. Same thing we did on Route 10 vehicles. So next slide, please. Uh, this is a very blurry shot. Greg, you got to give me some better pictures. But anyways, that's, that's Greg, Greg Allison right there. <laughs> Believe it or not. Greg, you changed a little bit. Uh, this client, some of the rest of the team members, Ron Krill was there for this launch. I think he was on our gondola team. Did a lot of work with the launch system. This is the rocket. This is the rocket went 36 miles high. Uh, had two fire extinguisher tanks screwed together. And basically, the bottlenecks were right here. But that's also where the parachute was. So we, when we talk about mass fractions for a small rocket, this thing is really a pretty high tank for a, uh, you know, popping mm -hmm. The one on the left is the brown launch uh, version. It's about 30,000 feet with it. Right. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, they just, we built the pad out of the test site in Gurley, and this is some of the testing we did. It's actually 800 pound thrust uh, hybrid motor. It uses nitrous, here's the nitrous tank. This is our early motor testing, vertical test. Okay, next slide. Uh, there's a new company spun off in South 5 activities called Hark. And uh, Hark is born, and the whole idea is we were going to use balloons and rockets, and we're going to lower cost. Um, basically, uh, we ended up getting some uh, SBR work. We got a JPL contract to launch some balloons. Went out in the Gulf of Mexico and did a lot of balloon launches. Had a lot of fun. Some of us still have sea legs, so I tried to avoid all those trips. I usually end up hiding out with my, you know, ground meat or something like that. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, there's three seats up here. I've got a computer I can move. And there's one here, and two there, and two more over there. Um, there's uh, one seat over here, a couple over here. I see two or three back in there, but anyways. So, I'll tell you, it's, the heart was a, we did a lot of work at night, working hard. I mean, boy, we, we had the club activity two nights a week, we had a heart going on, and we all worked day jobs. And boy, we ran hard for years. And boy, there's times we burn out, and then we get a little contract, and we'd all just pull up and try to give it all we could. And, but that, anyway, that's what happened. Hark was spun out of club activity. And uh, I guess we're ready for the next slide. By the way, Greg, Greg Allison was the president of Park. No, no, Greg. <laughs> Anyways, this is a motor that uh, Hark fired. This is a 1,500 pound thrust hybrid. It's our CATS rocket. Y'all remember the CATS prize? Well, uh, it turned out, I guess we were the only team that actually went out and uh, did a launch. You know, when that first came out, everybody said, hey, this will be done in six weeks or eight weeks, a piece of cake, nothing to it. It was 20 teams, they all talked about how fast they were going to do exactly. it. Exactly. And we were the only ones that actually stepped up the plate and took a shot at it. Boy, it was, it was, uh, it was not that easy. <laughs> it was another blown launch. and uh, Actually, it did launch, but we had a, uh, the motor kind of stayed in the uh, gondola and the tank flew with the payload. And you could, had a nice nitrous, high altitude nitrous flight. <laughs> like a steam rocket. So we did, we did fly, what, 20 miles, maybe? Uh, anyways, so next slide. Uh, 
This is uh, the cat's rock. For those who haven't seen it, this, this guy was really tall. This is the gondola. We had a big balloon. Yeah. This launch went off without a hitch as far as what activity took <coughs> place on the barge, the walking of the thing off the ship. I saw the deck of a boat. Right Telemetry. Now. This is out in the Gulf of Mexico in Eglin Airspace. What, 200 Two, miles out? 200 miles out. So we went through, Greg and Ronnie went through okay. all the proceedings to get the licensing and all this mess. So it was a big deal, a lot of paperwork. You think it's tough with the man's stuff? Well, it's tough with the amateur stuff too. So. Um, uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Um, all right. During this time, Route 10 visits Huntsville and plans to build a spaceship. I guess we first saw Bart in 98, 99. He was there for an Experimental Aircraft Association meeting. And he details this non winged spaceship. Some of you may not know it, but Route 10's original <coughs> rocket hung underneath the Proteus. It looked like a big, big nose rocket. Basically, he was going to go out. New suborbital is going to splash down in the ocean. Didn't have wings. As a matter of fact, it had an umbrella, kind of what he called a uh, feather, uh, a shuttlecock mode. You know, he still uses that term with his booms, but this looked like a shuttlecock. Had a little feathering system. It was going to slow you down. And well, Bert had that going for a while, that concept. He came back to Huntsville. And during this time, I'm really trying to engage him. And, and, uh, you know, and he was scared to death. He says, you know, I've gone to Aerojet, and they want to load my propellant with space suits. And uh, this hypergolics, he said, that scares me. So Bert comes and looks for rocket motor vendors. He's finally getting close to getting his money. He doesn't have money at this point, but we're all supporting him, emails. We're talking liquid rockets and hybrids and solids and pros and cons. This is a lot of activity with Hal Five Club members like Steve Stakis and Ronnie, Greg, we're all involved in these emails, it's exchanging ideas. He comes to Space America. This was a company in Huntsville that I worked for during my day job. <laughs> <laughs> this is my company and my night job. Burke comes to this company and Chris Barker was the president. And by the way, this company had about four or four or five million dollars worth of development. All private, it's going to do an Iridium satellite launch. Going to, you know, tear Boeing up and shut them all down. We're going to do it low cost. It's kind of, you know, it's a, that, that was the plans. But Iridium dried up and sold the money. So I ended up buying a lot of these assets. And Hart took advantage of the assets too. And we went for the X Prize. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Anyway, and then we had the Hart rocket motor, the hybrid. So Burt came to talk to Gray. Steve Mustakis, and they were one of the four teams that bid it on his motor. So there's four teams originally. It's HM Max, Hart, EAC, Space Dev. That time he's hired and working for Burt. Yeah, I'm already out working for Burt. I'm out there during this event. This meeting I showed up for, and then Burt came to this meeting, and I was wearing a different hat. He said, hey, you're the same guy over there. I said, yeah. I oh, know, and he said, well, why don't you come to work for me? And we'll just build our own motor. I said, that sounds pretty good. And then I said, nah. I turned down and tried to get Steve to go, and he wouldn't go. And I thought, you know, this Burke needs some help. So I did go out there and become a full-time guy. Okay, next slide. Uh, this, is, this is all these emails I was telling you about. By the way, Burt's concerns of liquid rocket complexity leads to hybrid propulsion development. The boss of Space, of Space America, Burt came over, he, and uh, Chris Barker pops a tape in, and it's one of our motors blowing to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and Burt looked at it and goes, whoa, what happened? And uh, Chris said, well, that, that, was a, that was a software problem, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, that I remember Bart's eyes were that big. They were like, Whoa! And that was the end of this. So I knew that bad signal died, so I said, man, I gotta get Bart school up on these hybrids. And then Bevan McKinney that was on HMX, you know, had MROC guy, he was really pushing for it too out there in the desert. So so here's what happened. We did some napkin designs and it led to jobs and he liked the rocket bike too, by the way. I don't know if y'all know it, but I got a rocket powered hybrid. And Bert thought that was just really cool. So uh, he still owes me a ride on that. Uh, 
But anyways, uh, the next slide. Uh, of course, here we are. We've got this world's first non-government space program. And uh, I'll tell you, this is a lot to have on your plate. You know, there's not many engineers working out there at scale that work on this program. I, I would have to say there work probably over 10 full-time engineers work in that program. My job was to develop the RCS thrusters, the test stand. We had to design our own motor case in-house. The rocket vendors didn't feel comfortable designing a motor case that would burn 60 to 80 seconds. They told us this. Both of them proposed building this out of steel, and that just scared the to death. They said, we don't want a bunch of steel with my composites, and forget it. We'll build the motor case. So we designed this. And we'd send these motor cases to the two vendors. And those two vendors were Space Dev and EAC. Um, so the test stand, I also had to design a trailer to carry around large quantities of nitrous. This is called the Monod, this is what we call it. It's just an acronym. But basically, this would hold 10,000 pounds of nitrous oxide or laughing gas. And, uh, and it could keep it refrigerated, it could keep it heated. Basically, so that was that's what I was responsible for. I had to deal with this test stand. I had to deal with all those elements of trying to get the vendors, uh, uh, you know, make sure that uh, everybody was in line. For instance, originally EAC wanted a long skinny motor case. Space Dev wanted a short fat one. And I said, well, I kind of split the difference. I said, well, it'll be 20 inches. And they all went nuts and said, you're killing us, you're, you're hurting, helping the other team. And basically what they did is uh, give us, we had a rerun of the performance numbers and, they, and we said we can live with it. So we ended up building that guy. So, but anyway, so the vendors, they designed the injector and the rubber and all that stuff, the motor control. And we did uh, some stuff. So next slide, please. Uh, basically, you guys know this. Guys, Test stand, spaceship. This is not much to this spaceship in terms of uh, infrastructure. Uh, next slide. Uh, see if there's anything you need that I can tell you about this guy. I don't know if you guys know it, but uh, of course, everything in here is the same as everything in here, except this guy's got jet engine controls down here for these guys. But everything else, the, the environmental control system, it's all basically just air at. Uh, I think we're running cabin pressure to 14.7 psi, and uh, Bert's all about short sleeves and good fun, you know, environment, short sleeve environment. Basically, these these <laughs> these windows are materials you can buy at McMaster Car, which is just off the internet. Nothing special. They're not quartz or anything like that. Uh, originally, uh, we were gonna Bert thought he'd need a, a, a steel a stainless steel nose cap. He needed a round one, so I ended up McMaster car ordering a, a stainless steel ball float for a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I cut it in half and I handed it to him. He said, this is perfect. What is this? I said, it's a McMaster car part number this and it's for a toilet. And he said, it's great. It's great. I like that. And the, early on, the RCS, Bart was, uh, Bart, we were looking for lightweight propel, uh, uh, tanks to put uh, air in. So I went to the paintball gun people, <laughs> and, uh, and there was these regulators they made, real small, high flow, and it was called the Armageddon. Yes. Uh, maybe it's time for Cuba. Oh, so we're, we're done. Oh, okay. Well, let me. I tell you what, we got, I'm gonna blow through these slides. You at least see some pictures. I'd love to show you a video, and let's just go on down through here. There's, this is really a. I'm sorry about this, because there's some really neat features about this that I can tell you about why it looks like it does. In fact, there's a side door that originally wasn't, and uh, a little mutiny there of the pilots. But anyway, keep going down. Uh, you've seen this, keep going. Of course, it's all two people set side by side, nitrous oxide, of course, the tank. Keep going, uh, keep going. Uh, just keep flipping. i got a rocket fire coming up. Thank you, next slide. Next one. Uh, you can see that's the trailer. One more slide. That's the center right there. I think you'll see a video pop up. Should. Sure. Yeah. Well, we see it here. We have it there. 
Okay, we'll just look at it at the end. Just keep going. Uh, of course, you see all this. I'll tell you, there's some neat things you can talk about. I went back to Huntsville, became a uh, uh, guy who wanted to definitely still do space. So we formed, formed the Arc Liberator team and, and keep going. We built hardware and we just keep cruising. This is some of the stuff we did. We only had a year to do all of this. I formed on Ryan. This is very condensed stuff. What we got going here. Uh, basically, that's the test facility. We test rocket motors, we design motors. We did this rocket trailer for uh, for uh, HMX, I mean, not HMX, uh, air launch, second stage rocket motor test facility. We delivered it four months ahead of schedule. We're now doing one that'll test 200,000 pound thrust engines. It'll be delivered by November. So we're building big hardware going to Mojave, and you'll hear about it. Or <coughs> literally hear it. Uh, you, know, uh, you can send this stuff on our website at soulrhymepropulsion.com. You can keep going. I'll show you some uh, some testing we've done. Any program we got going, we're on the T Space team, Air Launch, we're doing stuff with uh, X Core, HRT. These are motors we built to work on. Uh, we're doing a lot of neat stuff. We're built, designing thrusters for this. Uh, 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 CEV project for T-Space. Um, these are some of the programs. We're just about done. Of course, you might see some of these from Mr. Gump. And you keep cruising. And there's, man, this, there's been a lot of stuff happening. And now I'm uh, out of time. You can give another okay, hour any questions? Somewhere else. <laughs> In a bigger room. We got time for two quick questions. Anybody over here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, during the X Prize, um, you know, flight. Uh, they originally said three people. Well, there was only one pilot. I mean, why didn't why didn't he include two more people on the flight? As they originally said they were. I guess they just did it for risk mitigation. They didn't. It wasn't a requirement. They ended up flying so much memorabilia and hardware that uh, it's been for sale on the internet and and. Uh, uh, the prize allowed for mass equivalents of two other people. Oh, yeah. right. Yes, that's correct. All right, we have a question from the lady in the back. Yes. From Brazil, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Where is the lady? Well, I'm very curious about everything concerning space. Then let me ask you something. Uh, about Spaceship 2. You, uh, I'm not working with Spaceship 2. Okay, I'll but I want I'll... to know what kind of propulsion are, is going to be used by Spaceship 2. The same one as uh, uh, synthetic robot and hilarious gas or something else added? Uh, I believe, I, I believe it's up in the air. I think that's still being weighed out. Uh, but I don't know. I can't speak for them. But as I understand it, they're looking at all options right now. And, uh, boy, I'd hate to talk on behalf of them. But I know that I've been told they're not going back to the vendors they went to. And it'll probably be their in-house or something different. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay.